When XD is first launched, a start screen appears that gives you a number of options for opening files. I'm going to start my project by clicking on a new file with an iPhone 6, 7 sized artboard in place. I'd like to add three more of the same sized artboards to my file, so I grab the artboard tool and click on the canvas three times. To rename my artboards, I can double click a title and key in something new, or I can click on the layers panel icon double-click on artboard name and type in a new name. Once you edit one artboard name in the layers panel, you can tap-click to select the other layers in order or tap-shift to select them in reverse. Changes made in the layers panel are applied immediately to artboards on the canvas. As I add text, graphics and images to my artboards, they'll appear in the layers panel too. I know I want a couple of artboards to be taller from the outset, so I can design them as screens that scroll I shift-click two artboards to select them. Then I click the bottom handle of the selection container and I drag it down. Both artboards are lengthened together. Notice a dash line appears in the center of these two artboards. That indicates the fold line. Anything I put underneath will appear only when my page is scrolled, provided I have vertical scrolling enabled. For example, if I draw a rectangle above the fold on this artboard and fill it with a gradient, only that portion of my page appears if I click the desktop preview button unless I scroll down to the white area underneath. If I want to add a solid color background to an artboard, I simply select it, click the fill swatch in the property inspector, and choose my color. I can also enter a hexadecimal number or shorthand, followed by enter or return on my keyboard. To add a grid to help you lay out your pages, click the grid checkbox in the property inspector. Change the grid cell size as desired or the color. Simply click Make Default if you want to reuse this configuration on another page. Then apply as necessary. Next, start using XD's drawing and text tools to lay out your experience. I'll begin by selecting the text tool, clicking and dragging out a text container. Notice it snaps to the grid if I get near it. I'll key in my app's name, which is Ginchi and adjust its size and alignment in the property inspector, knowing I'll replace it with the real logo type later. Next, I'll key in text for a social sign and link. On second thoughts, I'd rather have that be a button. So I'll grab the rectangle tool, click and drag a button shape. Now, because it's drawn on top of my text, I go to the layers panel where it's already highlighted and I drag it down to change the stacking order. I choose the select tool, and with the shift key, I click on the text in the layers panel to select both items. I then go over to my align and distribute buttons and click align middle vertically and align middle horizontally to perfectly center one above the other. Then I reposition the button on my canvas. Because I need three buttons in one column on this page, I click repeat grid. This allows me to simply click a gripper and pull it out until I have what I want. I can also go into the space between the buttons and click and drag to change the margins. I'll further discuss editing repeat grids in the next video. I like the size and style of my Ginchi head and button text, and I want to reuse these styles across my design. I simply select the artboard they are on, click the Assets panel icon to open it, and click the plus sign next to character styles. All styles on this artboard are added and can be used elsewhere in my file. Another powerful feature in NXT is symbols, which you can also manage from the assets panel. I can draw a shape as simple as a rectangle, like I'm doing here, to reserve space for a header. If I make it a symbol and copy and paste it to other artboards, changes that I make to the symbol are applied across all the instances except in the case of overrides. For example, if I double click into the symbol and draw a few ellipses inside the rectangle to serve as placeholders for icons to be added later, they appear in all instances of this symbol. With XD, you have the tools and performance to design your experience from scratch. XD also offers easy access to other resources that make getting started easier. This includes wireframes which have pre-built templates and components that can be used as is or customized, as well as other UI resources for designing for Apple iOS, Google Material Design, and Microsoft Windows. I'll go into these in more detail in the next video. Now that I have the foundation of a few screens in place, I'm going to show you how to use XE's features and other resources to build things out even faster. Here I've built a sample product tile. 
As you can see, it's sitting on the pasteboard and is not part of the artboard. The pasteboard is a good place to experiment or hold items that aren't immediately needed. At any point, I can drag something from the pasteboard to an artboard. However, if I don't get it all the way on, the part that bleeds off the artboard appears ghosted, and that part disappears altogether when the item is deselected. If I select it again and drag it further into the artboard, XD helps me center align it. If I copy something from one artboard to another, it will paste it into the same relative position provided the whole artboard is showing. I can reposition it as necessary. This product tile is only one of several I want to show on my homepage. By selecting it and choosing Repeat Grid from the Property Inspector, I can make an unlimited number of identical copies on a horizontal and or vertical grid. In this case, I'll repeat the tile a few times vertically. I click the margin between any of the copies and drag to adjust the spacing. Changes I make to any of the elements inside a repeat grid occurs in them all. Here I'm rescaling the like icon or heart and bolding the product name placeholder. I can also add and remove items. Here I'll add an avatar component for likes. I'll grab the ellipse tool and lay in some circles to be populated with images later. I click and drag the ellipse tool and hold the shift key to constrain it to a circle. By adding the option key on Mac or the alt key on Windows, I can also constrain it from the center. I want multiple circles, so I click on repeat grid again and pull the gripper right to make a few copies. I want my circles overlapped, so I click in the margin and drag left to a negative number. At this point, I have one repeat grid nested inside of another one, which is pretty cool. Next, I want to put a touchpad on my search page. So I go to File, Get UI Kits, and I pick the platform I'm interested in. After following the instructions on the page where it is located and downloading the file, I open it up. I locate a keypad, I click on my zoom tool, and I drag across the part of the UI kit I'm interested in seeing up close. I grab my select tool, I click on the keypad, and choose Edit, Copy. I go back to my working file, make sure that the search artboard is selected, and I choose Edit, Paste. I click the keypad and drag it where I want it. Next, I want to add a Create an Account artboard between my first and second screens. Since it's a fairly standard page, I'll look for something pre-built. I go to the File menu, choose Get UI Kits again, and this time select Wireframes. I download and unzip this file and open up the mobile file. This opens up a file created specifically for Adobe XD and includes a wide range of templates and UI elements across a variety of categories that are available for use as is or modified. I survey what's available and find a screen I like. I choose the artboard, right click and choose copy and go back to my Ginchi file and choose edit paste. I grab my artboards and I move them around until I'm happy with the order they're in. I'm starting to get an eclectic mix of colors and fonts since I've copied and pasted so much into my file. If I really liked the blues that came in with the newest artboard, I could select the artboard, open my assets panel, and click the plus sign next to the subcategory colors. This would take all the colors on that artboard and make them custom swatches. If at any point I wanted to change one, I could right click on it and choose edit. Then I'd identify a new color in the color picker and XD would update that color everywhere it was used. In this case though, I want to go away from the blue used in the wires. I go back to the assets and click the leftmost color swatch. I hold the shift key and click the swatch on the right to grab all swatches in between. Then I right click and choose delete. I decide I'd rather use the colors on my homepage for now. So I select it and re-click the plus sign next to colors. Then I use my select tool to grab the blue art board and I choose a color swatch from the assets panel to change it. I follow the same steps to change the color of other objects. I don't change the color of any of the text because I'm going to update it using the character styles in my assets panel and the character color is part of the style. I select a container of text, I go to the assets panel and select the character style I'd like to appear. I do this to any remaining improperly styled text to get my file in order. Be sure to watch the next tutorial in this Adobe XD Getting Started lesson. Drawing simple icons in XD is quick and easy using combinations of the drawing tools including the rectangle tool, ellipse tool, line tool, and the pen tool. I can do even more by incorporating Boolean operators to add, subtract, intersect, and exclude overlapped shapes. 
I'll recreate some of the icons used in my final Ginji sample file to demonstrate. Here, I'll create two icons using only the drawing tools. I start the search or magnifying glass icon by grabbing the ellipse tool, clicking and dragging. By holding the shift key, I constrain the shape to a circle. By adding the option key on Mac or the alt key on Windows, I can also constrain the shape from the center. I hit escape to deselect the circle and grab the line tool. I use guides that appear to the lower right of the circle and align my cursor. I click once and drag down and to the right and hold the shift key to constrain my line to 45 degrees. I let go when it's the length I want and nudge the line a little closer to the circle by using my up arrow and left arrow keys. Next I'll draw the profile or person icon. 